Thank you for joining us for this installment of Science Olympiad STEM sessions. This month, we're focusing on the history and science of flight. And this year has produced some of the most exciting flight news we've ever seen. A decade ago, would you have believed that we could send regular citizens up into Earth's orbit on a rocket ship piloted by someone other than an astronaut? Well, that's what happened. Elon Musk's SpaceX Dragon capsule allowed four people to circle the Earth for three days, splashing down off the coast of Florida on September 18th. And on board were a pilot, a geoscientist, a science communicator, and a physician's assistant. That event marked a new era in human spaceflight and exploration. And it begs the question, would you try it? In Science Olympiad, a lot of our events center around model flight. Events like Right Stuff and Elastic Launch Glider teach the basics of lift, gravity, thrust, and drag, and allow participants to appreciate the craft of design, the precision of the build, and the beauty of the actual flight. Some of our competitors have taken their Science Olympiad skills to the next level, and many compete internationally in free flight F1D competitions overseen by the World Air Sports Federation. In fact, one of the best known champions, Kang Lee, got his start in model flight after coaching his daughter in Science Olympiad flying events in California. His story is featured in an award-winning documentary, Float, written and produced by a Science Olympiad alumnus Ben Sachs. Ben is a Renaissance man who took his love of science and applied it to a variety of fields through art, design, manufacturing, film, architecture, photography, and business. I'm so excited for Ben, our speaker this month, to tell you more about his amazing journey through every letter of STEM. What do you do? What does that mean? My current role is the senior software product manager for a company called Inventables. And Inventables makes CNC um, routers. And those are a subtractive manufacturing tool that's used to cut different materials like woods and plastics and metals. So my role is to manage the design and development of the software, which is a cloud-based uh, web software called Easel. And Easel is used to design and to create um, CAM tool paths as well as machine control of the CNC machines. How old were you when you joined Science Olympiad? I first started Science Olympiad in fifth grade, so I probably would have been about 11, is my guess, 11 or 12. Um, I was in Science Olympiad from fifth grade until 12th grade. Um, and I went to Shaker Heights High School in, in Shaker Heights, Ohio. So I started in, in the middle school, which would be Division B, and then, and then went into high school. But uh, I, I did Science Olympiad pretty much for, for seven years of my life. Who introduced you to Science Olympiad? My brother, my older brother, who, who uh, was a year ahead of me in school, he actually introduced me to Science Olympiad. And I, I re really distinctly remember this day in fifth grade when everyone's choosing you know, extracurricular events and I had to choose between going into the line with some of my friends to play soccer or to go with my brother into the line to hang out with the Science Olympiad kids. He was already, he had already done it a year. Um, so he, my brother convinced me to join Science Olympiad in, in, uh, in fifth grade and I'm glad he did. Which events do you like best? Primarily when I was in Science Olympiad, I was involved in most, most of the building events. Um, I competed in Right Stuff, uh, in Scrambler, uh, Egg Drop, and Bottle Rockets. Um, I also was very fond of, of Dynamic Planet, which was a, a testing event that focused on environmental science. I also built the Boomalever, which was the you know the bridge event, or which turned into a cantilever for, for Boomalever. Where did you go to college or graduate school, and what did you study? I ended up going to Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Um, where I live still for the School of Architecture. Um, and, I, and I remember the first time I went to see an architecture studio, it was just full of all these balsa wood models. Um, they were hanging out of the lights, they were on the walls, they were on the tables, and all the students were in there just meticulously crafting these models and drawing. And I just I said, that's what I wanna do. And uh, I went, and went to study architecture. What excites you about your work? The thing that excites me the most about my work is being able to solve other people's problems. Um, 
when people come to me with a problem, they you know typically are pretty frustrated about something, um, and whether it's uh, something that's easy to solve or challenging to solve, to me it's a matter of, of understanding and listening and empathizing with that person and then trying to come up with a solution for that. So I, I get excited when I can see that um, direct, that direct um, benefit that we work, that my work has on, on other people. Do you collaborate with other STEM professionals? How and who? I'm collaborating with um, lots of other different professionals. So I work with um, people from uh, on the hardware side uh, who are designing and, and manufacturing our machines. So that might be a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer um, to working with the computer science side, which is um, software engineers and software architects. Um, we also work with, with creative professionals. So graphic designers, illustrators, uh, user experience designers. Um, and we also at times work with people who uh, in the marketing field who are writing copy, um, writing technical uh, documentation. Um, so, how, you know, how does something work? You have to write instructions for that um, and creating content to market the product as well. So that's photography and videography. So it's, it, we get to, I get to interact with uh, people across all these different professions and, and being able to interact and talk to them and understand their needs and, and to sort of translate that into the product is something that um, I find really enjoyable. What did you learn in Science Olympiad that still helps you today? I kind of learned very um, concretely the importance of the scientific method and of single variable testing versus multivariable testing. So in single variable testing, you've got all these variables, you try to isolate one of them and test for the one variable. So uh, a good example is in Right Stuff with uh, the rubber band powered airplanes. Um, you can change, uh, for example, you can change the the cross section of the rubber band, right? You, you can go to a, a thicker rubber band or a thinner rubber band. The thicker rubber band, you can put less turns in it. The, the thinner rubber band, you can put more turns in it. Um, if the rubber band has a constant mass, the length will vary in the, with, the, with respect to the cross section. So if you start changing the rubber band and then you change the propeller and then you change the angle of the of attack of the wing and then you time your flight, you know, you've changed too many things to know what impact of what the one variable had. Um, and I think in a, a lot of respects, what we do in, in software development is we try to isolate one or two variables at a time. We try to understand how does changing one thing impact um, the outcome. So a good example in software would be, you know, the color of a button. And you know, you can read lots of stories, uh, especially about, about Amazon and what color a button should be for users to click on to buy a product on, on Amazon or, or other websites. So isolating and testing just the color of one button um, is such an, it, it's such a great example of, of the scientific method in action. Um, and so what we do in software is, you know, we, we create a hypothesis. We say, if we, if we change the button from red to green, we think more people will click on it. And then we put it in action, we do a test, we have a control group and a test group. So half the users might see a red button, half the users might see a green button. And if, and if it turns out that our hypothesis is correct, we make the change and then we make maybe make another change to test that one. Um, and so it's going back to the roots of, of right stuff in, you know, in middle school that we're learning to change one thing at a time so we can figure out what works. And uh, you know, it's just really doing that enough times over and over again, you just, you just get a feel for it why it's important and what what makes uh, a good test and that that's the kind of thing that science Olympiad, you, you know you just learn by doing you can read all the books you want about the scientific method but if you do it and practice it it'll just be there when you need it what's the most exciting thing you've learned in the last year it's not only is it okay to fail but it's actually important to fail and it's important to fail fast and what i mean by that is if you're not failing, you're not learning something about the test that you're taking, undertaking. And if you, and if you fail slowly, you might be invested in, in a hypothesis. You might, you might say, okay, I'm going to test this thing. It's going to take a long time. I've got to build this whole structure. I've got to do this whole process, and I'm going to devote, you know, a week, two weeks, a month to make this thing, to test this thing. And at the end of that long period of time, I've failed. And that, it's still okay to fail because you learned that that was the wrong thing. But if you can fail fast, that means that you can get back on the test 
again quicker and you can level up quicker. What do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, uh, I spend my free time with my wife, uh, starting a family here. So uh, my wife is a, is a material science engineer and uh, her and I spend time together in our, uh, in our house and outside. We have a couple cats. Um, I also really enjoy uh, cycling. So I do, uh, I, I bike, bicycle uh, riding and do that around Pittsburgh. Um, we have an uh, incredible network of rail trails. These are former railway uh, lines that have been turned into bike trails. So we have a network of um, hundreds and hundreds of miles of bike trails that you can ride on. Um, I also build and fly rubber band powered uh, model airplanes. I, I haven't really done that very much lately, but I still have a passion for it. Um, and, uh, and I like to fish. I, I've been a fly fisherman and a, and a fisherman my whole life since I was, even before I was in Science Olympiad, I was, I was fishing. Um, and uh, fishing is very much, uh, very much a scientific method in fishing. Uh, you know, if you don't, if you're not catching fish, you change a variable and then you can try to, you know, try to catch fish again. So you change the lure, you change the location. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very meditative process, uh, fishing. What advice do you have for students interested in science? If you find something that you're passionate about, it doesn't matter what it is, if you are able to recognize that you enjoy it, it makes you happy and you can do that, um, then that's 90% of the battle. Um, so it's a great thing that Science Olympiad has, you know, over 20 events. I don't know how many it is now, but there's there's a, a whole diverse group of events that you can get into. You can be interested in, in biology and um, earth science. You can be interested in robotics and engineering. And there's, there's basically anything that you like to do and you can find something to be interested in. Um, so, so yeah, you should be proud of being smart and you should be proud of being curious and you should always be asking questions and uh, have a great time competing and just stick with it and you'll, you'll do amazing things. And, and uh, you have a lot of people believing in you and I'm really looking forward to, to see what you all can come up with and create. Thank you so much for listening this month. We hope this interview inspired you to try out some activities in the free lesson plans and guides we've posted on our MySO page. And be sure to check out the videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Enjoy. Enjoy.